This is the Watch 4 Pro from Huawei, which has just replaced my GT3 Pro that I used to use extensively up into getting my hands on this model. So it's a better looking watch, definitely. They've improved a lot of areas, and compared to that GT3 Pro, this is a more refined watch, pretty much in every single area. The frame around it, the housing, is a even more hardened titanium housing. The titanium strap is slightly better, the build quality. The screen is now a curved AMOLED, 1.5 inches, with 310 ppi, so it looks very sharp. It runs Harmony OS 3.0, so it's not just good looking, but it's also packing a lot of fitness features into this. So you can track over 100 fitness activities. You've got the health tracking and monitoring on it. So sleep monitoring, heart rate monitor, and the GPS tracking. I'll be putting all of that to the test in this in-depth review. And it does have eSIM support. So you can place standalone calls, answer text messages, do it all from just the watch. You don't even need to take your phone with you when you go out for a run, for example. This is what you find in the box. We've got our quick start guide. This is some extra links. If you did have quite a wide wrist, well, they included some of them. They're the titanium ones. So they're quite easy to remove. They've got that little release on them. So you don't need to go to a jeweler to have the watch links removed, which is very handy there. Our charger, so it's like the other watches from Huawei. This is magnetic, so it's simply just locks onto the bottom there and you plug it into a type C charger and it's got a reasonably strong magnet there too with it so it's not going to just fall off. The Watch 4 Pro is even more refined than before from the previous edition so we've got this titanium housing to it. Now this is a TC4 titanium housing so that's two times tougher and about three times stronger too as well and it does feel very strong so where we have the watch strap this is the 22 millimeter straps too by the way so you can get replacements for it where that fits in it feels very strong so we have ceramic here on the back and we've got our sensors there for the heart rate monitor there's also a skin temperature body sensor there too with it and there's this loudspeaker on the side. So built-in microphone too, you can have those uh, voice conversations calls with it. it. can basically act like a mobile phone with its eSIM functionality there. Now the strap, I'll just share a little bit more of that. It's quite easy to get that back in. So that's back in place now. Uh, you'll see that it's got this style to it. So it's the same uh, as what we have with the older model here too, which I have. So I've got the titanium strap. The old one's also the titanium strap there. And it works well and I do find this here, the mechanism just pushing this in feels a little bit better, more refined than the previous edition. So it's easy enough to open that on, up, sorry, and then get it on and just strap that there into place. So the screen here, we are looking at uh, 48 millimeters, so 1.5 inches, and it's a curved AMOLED screen this time around. So they do have the ceramic glass, sapphire glass, sorry, over the top of the screen, and you can see the curvature to it slightly here in the middle. The way it goes up. Now it's fully laminated and it almost looks like the glass is sticking up, the screen there, and very nice finish to it. All rounded off around the frame here, more than the previous model here. As you can see, there is a bit of a difference there. Now the thickness, slightly thicker here too. It's 12.9 millimeters now, and this is because of the changes made, because of the eSIM, the modems in there. The button on the side, so you can assign things to this by default. It's got, well, actually three functions here when you do press that. So you can see your fitness, health check there, and the phone mode. The crown, so this does rotate for the UI, which I'll get into shortly. So you can use that to zoom, uh, tapping it, double tap there to uh, bring up all your current open applications, close them off too as well. And when you get out, so if I tap here, go back to the menu, you can see you can use this as a zoom here. Now, in general, it's normally very fluid. It's an LTPO screen too as well, this one by the way, so the refresh rate will be adjusting to hopefully save a bit on the battery life. So excellent build quality now with that TC4 titanium, the titanium strap, absolutely superb. I like it, I think it does look a lot better, it just feels a lot more refined. The Watch 4 Pro also does have IP68 water resistance, it's got a 5 ATM, and 30 meters of free diving, even approved for that. Now the battery within it, uh, it's 790 milliamp hours. Now that's gonna be good for about three to four days, depending on your use, and you can use the ultra power saving mode to extend that even further. But because it's got the eSIM in here, the battery life is about half that of their previous models. 
So I don't find the strap and the watch itself to be too uncomfortable. I'm used to wearing these watches, so for me, it's fine. It's just slightly thicker, not really an issue. Now, my hairs on my arm are not really getting stuck in the strap because I've got it on quite tight. You really do need to do this in order for the heart rate monitor to be as accurate as possible, the readings from it. So raise to wake, as you can see, that is working well. And I do think it's a great looking watch on my wrist here. And I do like these new watch faces they have gone with. These are called the Planet Quest watch faces. So you get information on your sunrise, the moon set, and you can see exactly where the sun is in accordance to where you are on the globe here. So if I press and hold, I can then go to the customize here, and that will take me into where I can set different watch faces. So if I decide now, you know, I'm getting tired of having our own planet, we can go and select our moon, you can go and select uh, Venus, all of the planets in our solar system, Jupiter there, you get a little bit of info on them too as well. I'll tell you the diameter of them. Um, there's Mercury, and they all look pretty much uh, exactly the same. The quality of them, that is, I'm talking about, which is very good. They are rendered really nice, the graphics of them, and I do like it. It's something very different. Now, if you didn't want that, I'll just go out of it, then you can, of course, go back into your typical watch faces. And you have an absolute huge array. So you've got one of these ones here that gives you all your fitness tracking information on it which is the one I typically kind of use. So that one there has your steps and everything else. And the screen, by the way, looking very good. I don't see any flicker on it. It's bright enough to use out in direct sunlight. For this one here, if you're a runner, you can see exactly where you've been. It'll tell you your heart rate. All that information is there for you. And a lot of them you can go along and customize too. So going into the UI, you simply need to just press where the crown is. So you go straight into that. You can see all of our different applications. You've got your own store here, so you can connect up to that with uh, your account and download further apps. So you've got your music player with onboard storage here, barometer, timer, temperature sensor, phone mode. So here we can use the dialer. You can place one-on-one -on -one calls. You can also um, answer text messages. So I could just leave my phone, so my P60 Pro here, just leave it and go out with this because I've got my eSIM connected up to it, receive the calls, answer calls, text messages, and things like that. You've got your canned replies too for things like social media with the notifications you can get on the watch. So for things like say WhatsApp and the keypad itself, I'll just show you what that looks like too. So bring that up, I'm gonna tap that again. So there it is, so you can dial away and you can call people and you can use your own contacts too. You sync it up with the application to the watch itself. So there's quite a lot of applications in here. I won't go through all of them. So there's a lot of them to do with the sport mode, torch mode there you can use, camera, so you can use that remote camera shutter if you wanted that, Huawei's own wallet, and in our settings, I'll go through that shortly because I think a lot of people will probably be interested in that. But getting back out of this, I'll show you how to use the watch as well. So swipe here, get your fitness information. So you can see calories burn right there. Uh, the amount of time I've been exercising is uh, 69 minutes there. And you can get all your health stats just off this quick screen here, quick glance at that. You can see how much I slept last night, uh, skin temperature there probably dropped down and my blood oxygen saturation uh, levels there too as well. So the screen timer, I should have set that myself actually to be a little bit longer. So I'll put that back on, there we go, screen timer on. So you can set that to five minutes if you want to. It times out, but you can adjust that through the settings there. So there's all that fitness information you can see from that screen and you keep going, you can get your calendar, events are all there, and you've got a quick launch here for different exercises, maybe the more common ones that you do use, a bit of information on that too as well. So if I keep going this way now, you'll see that we do have weather information, you do have their Celia, so you can ask it things, and I do find this very handy. So you can tap that, or you can also say, hey Celia. Takes a little while, there we go. Of course she didn't. I didn't understand that. Okay, of course she did not understand that. I'll do it again. Oh dear, cancel, cancel. Sorry, I didn't understand that. Set a timer for 10 minutes. Okay, timer set to 10 minutes. There we go. And it's done that with the AI. So it's a handy feature to have. You might not use that too much, but it's there if you do need it. Now, if you swipe down, you then get a lot of all different toggles. So you can see right now I have 4G. I've got four bars of signal strength. I found it to be pretty good, just like a phone almost. Uh, the date and other information, NFC that is currently on, connected to my phone, battery level there at 55%. Torch mode, do not disturb mode, sleep. Other features in here like 
find my phone too. Could be handy if you always misplace your phone. I know I do that a lot. And we've got a direct Wi-Fi connection as well. You don't actually have to have it going through the app all the time. And then of course, the eSIM support with it. Ultra battery life mode, you can put it into that if you want to save on battery and a flight mode here too. So you're able to put that on and save on it transmitting. So it's going to turn off the mode and the wireless features, Bluetooth, all of that. There's super link is also there. And then if you swipe up from the bottom here, you get all of your notifications that you're able to go through. Those will show up there. Your text messages too, which you can reply to. And this is how you can reply to those text messages. So you've got a couple of options here. You've got voice typing. Hello, this is voice typing. Okay, so that filled that in, and that was pretty accurate, even with my funny New Zealand accent. Type here if you want your manual keyboard, so you can use this, and I find it's okay. You have to be quite accurate, because it is a small little screen, of course, only 1.5 inches, but it does a pretty good job. But I do like this, it's got predictive text, so I just type in H, E, and then L, and it's going to come up with hello. So it's guessing you know, what is gonna, I'm gonna be saying next based on those letters. So that is very handy to use that. You also have your emojis in there too that you can see, and so it's pretty fully featured, the keyboard and the way you can use it. Now the great thing of having an eSIM with the same exact number too as my main phone is I can just leave my phone at home. I can go out and take the wash, just wear that when I go for a bike ride. And this is the quality that you get from the loudspeaker. It's what you're listening to right now. I'm having the call on the watch and it sounds pretty good. The microphone quality is also excellent. So great full calls on the go using and taking advantage of the eSIM feature. Then I'll quickly show you the settings. I'll try to be as quick as possible here because I know this is rather boring, but some people want to see this. So that's my eSIM at the top there. We've got wireless, Bluetooth, you can turn that on and off, the mobile network options, more connections, the watch faces, display brightness, timeout settings. So I will show you this one very briefly. So automatic brightness is the one I've kept it on. The sleep, I've set that to auto and the screen on. Currently got that now because, well, it's on so I can show you all of this. Sound and vibrations, the haptics do feel very good. Notifications, options, pin, apps, battery, security and privacy, Huawei Assistant, wallet, accessibility features, the down button, you can customize that, workout settings. And then you've got your updates there and about. That's it for our settings menu. So fitness tracking now, I'll show you all the different tracking modes because there are a lot. If you just jump into the fitness setting now, you can see the courses and plans this is for running. Now they're very good because you've even got this AI running plan. So you can have it basically getting it to run against yourself, to better yourself. And I've tested it out before, it's very good. I did actually like it. And if you're a keen runner, then it's something you'll probably be testing out quite a bit. Outdoor run there, indoor, outdoor walk, indoor walk, outdoor cycling, indoor cycling, pull, outdoor swimming, driving range, skipping, mountain hiking, hiking, trail, skiing, snowboarding, Cross country skiing, triathlon, it just goes on and on and on. And you've got your custom settings. Now I like this here, workout settings, because this is the broadcast that it does, the feedback it gives you. So it will tell you, and I'll give you a sample of that later in this video when I do my test of the tracking and the heart rate monitor. It will go through that and give you all that information that you want. Now you can get it to auto detect workout as well. And this is very handy for someone that's like me, a little bit forgetful. I sometimes forget to turn on the tracking when I go cycling and it will do that automatically. If it detects it, it will pop up and tell you, are you training, you know, are you going for a run? And you can confirm that. The volume of that, and you can even turn the screen always on, but that's gonna really kill your battery. And now for a bit of a real world test. I've got a bike here. Yes, it is an e-bike, but I will be turning off the motor most of the time. So I'll be doing the work myself, not cheating. And I just want to see how my heart rate is going to fare when I push really hard up some of these climbs and compare that to what I typically get on this ride I'm going on. Now the mode I'm using here is the outdoor cycle mode and it started already. You can see my heart rate there. And GPS signal is two of the three bars. I'll report back on how much I lose with the battery life. So it's currently at 89%. And I need to start this by pressing. Workout started. And you can hear that they've got a new voice prompt. So they've changed the voice, which is great. So the watch is set to give me feedback every five kilometers. Let's have a listen to it.
So it gives you all of that information that you need when you are running, when you're training. Very handy, including your training stress. So I've reached the steepest point now with my climb and I still haven't turned on the motor so I'm not cheating yet. But it starts to get very steep here and I'm going to push it as hard as I can up this climb to test out the watch and the heart rate monitor. Now let's take a look at the results from that ride that I just did. So you can see previous rides, they're all listed in the application. So I've got a, a lot of them. When I do go for a ride, I try to remember to use it, but we want to take a look at this recent one. So you can see the route that I did take. Now I've monitored this quite closely and it's looking pretty accurate because I wasn't riding right on the very edges of some of those trails. So if it looks like it's not lining up with the road, that's because you can actually cut it a little shorter. And what I have seen too with the tracking, there's no jagged lines. And that to me is a clear giveaway that the tracking was not working properly with GPS, but no, it seems to be working really fine. Follows pretty much where I went with my ride. So that has been excellent. It's the same as the previous models. Really, I've noticed no real improvement or changes in that at all. So you can see the speeds I got up to. So I got up to quite a fast speed at one point, but I don't know if that's listed. I guess in the chart here, it'll show that. So you can see my heart rate where it was going right up, of course, was the climbs where I pushed it really hard. I did a bit of a sprint. I even stood up to use my weight to push through the ride to get the climb. This is where I peaked at the 171. It was also about 32 degrees. So I was under a, quite a bit of physical stress there. And you can see there. So it will show us to uh, the altitude I climbed up to. The heart rate recovery was pretty poor because I didn't stop. Afterwards, you're supposed to stop, not really move about and I kept doing things. I was putting my bike away and whatnot, so that's not really that accurate there. You can see the speed. So maximum speed was 58 kilometers per hour, and that is actually correct. I looked down at my bike and I got up to about 56, 57 going downhill. It's basically like a road bike, so that was why it was so fast. There's the climb there too as well that I did, so it was pretty tough. I had two climbs there for a 20K ride. Uh, I did a, a reasonable amount of work there, so pretty good workout. So you've got other details here. You can see the total ascent, elevation, average speed, average heart rate, 126, calories burnt, and the duration. So in that time, I calculated and it would probably be a little bit less than this because I was always looking at the screen and I stopped to record the screen as well. Uh, you lose about 15% of the battery, this is with everything on and activated when you are training with GPS per hour, okay? So it's not amazing, but at least you get a decent time for those workouts there. I think that should cover it for most people. A little bit more information too on there and performance. It's telling you recovery time. It's gonna be uh, 19 hours. I should be fully recovered by tomorrow there, so that is pretty good. And that brings me on to just a few more things with the Health app. So you don't have to have a Huawei phone, which I'm currently using, no. This will work on your Samsung phones, your iPhones as well, so it's gonna work across all of them. And you need to pair it up, sync it up. There's some firmware updates that you'll find on devices here. So if you go into the watch, you get that information. So you see here, you've got all these other bits and pieces. You can set up the health monitoring you want. That's the arterial stiffness detection. So something uh, that I have run before, for some reason wants to verify my Huawei ID. Okay, so I tested that out before and it was okay. So it's normal, heading into the almost slightly stiff area. So I'm gonna have to be a little bit careful about that. Uh, other things you can set up with your main applications. You've got the wallet there, the weather reports, alarms, ECG function, music, and your watch faces too for the watch. So that's all watch specific stuff. Now the firmware updates, they can be pretty big. The last one was really large. It took a very long time and you just got to keep at it. It failed a couple of times, but just keep at it and it will eventually will update the watch. Just make sure it's fully charged before you start to run that update. So you've got other areas where you can go to discover various different fitness thing, so that's good. Uh, Strava support, yes, you can sync it with uh, with all of this too as well. Uh, exercise plans, so you can go into the outdoor runs, indoor ones. Do basically what you can on the watch with the application. And then your general health overview here. So my weight's in there, heart rate, and sleep tracking. Let's take a look at that. So this was last night's sleep. Uh, seven hours and 36 minutes. I got up, I think it was one time last night. Let's see if that is mentioned in here. Uh, oh, I woke up two times. Okay, hi. I didn't realize it was two times. All right, 
must have been sleepwalking or something. Uh, and it ranks it all here. So pretty good there, apart from the amount of times I broke out, uh, woke up there. Breathing quality, it's also monitoring that too. So that is great. And you've got full history in this application. So I can just keep going back the day. See, that's the 13th. So I can just keep scrolling to other days that I've also been using it. You can see there, and it just goes on and on. Some nights, not getting a lot, not very good sleep there. Uh, typical tech reviewers, I think, have always got so much work and we always tend to be up very late at night. So the applications just got so much in there. I'm really only scratching the surface here of what you can do with the Huawei Health app. And then some of our health options here we do have that we can test. So we've got arterial stiffness that you can test that out. Now this one, you have to set that in the app. I've already done that to activate it. I'll show you that result later on when I get into the application side of things. But this is great for people that want to monitor that, keep an eye on things. You've got your stress levels too as well. So you can see that. You've got that, of course, as I mentioned before, your oxygen saturation level with your blood. So that should always be about, there we go, 99%. It should always be around about over 95% for some someone that's healthy. You've got no issues with your lungs, of course. You're not a smoker too. So I will just quickly show you the other one here that we do have is the ECG. All right, so that takes a bit of time, but it's using the sensor here on this button. So you just need to hold that. Now I won't do it for the full time because it's just a little bit too long. I think it's about 30 seconds. Now I've done it before in the app and I will later show you the result of that. So it's gonna get a little bit cross with me, angry that I've taken my finger off. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff in here. So you've got, uh, of course, this is the temperature. You can check out your skin temperature there. And the other ones here that are interesting are your heart rate, of course. So that's being monitored constantly. You can see when I was doing my exercise and got my heart up to 171. That's when I was pushing it really hard. And resting heart rate of about 42 is actually the lowest. It's a little bit high here at the moment. That's because I'm talking away uh, recording this video. All up, this is another fantastic watch for them. So if you're coming from the GT3 Pro, uh, you're not gonna notice too much in terms of its functionality. I haven't really. So the heart rate monitoring, sleep monitoring, and the GPS tracking seems to be all about the same. I'm not really seeing too much of difference there at all. The main key difference is this is a watch that feels far more refined compared to that model there. Not just the physical side of things. So the build's a lot better. The newer, stronger titanium housing, the glass with the curvature on it. Yes, all of that's fantastic. Software, slightly more refined too as well. The voice prompts, so glad that it's now a native English speaker. Thank you, Huawei, for fixing that one. And hopefully it's native for other languages as well, a native speaker. And the eSIM functionality that's good to have. So I can leave my phone at home and just go for a run or a bike ride with the Watch 4 Pro here and know that I can make a call if I need to, can answer calls, can reply to text messages. That's very good here, the functionality, but it does come at a cost. You know now what I'm gonna say, the battery life. Yes, it is a big drop compared to the B, the GT3 Pro that I've been using up until now. So with that model, I could, fantastic better. I could go for a week without charging it. This is gonna be about every two or three days for me with my current use. So you lose about 30% per day. And if I go for a big long run, or cycle, the GPS burns through that with all of the functionality enabled, including the eSIM. So that is the downside to this model. And the other, yes, Wear OS, it doesn't support it. This is Harmony OS, and it does not have Google Pay either with it, of course, being Huawei. So there's some minor things there, but it's otherwise a fantastic watch here if you're after all that fitness tracking, health tracking, and the eSIM support.